So Dr. Alex Greninger of UW School of Medicine is here with us now. You um, have been following this, and of course, this is your line of work, uh, following Yeah, you're viruses. a virus specialist, yes. basically. Yes. Um, we did have a question from one person, and I think this goes along with what you were just saying. You know, how long does the test take for the coronavirus? Because it seems like we've been waiting a while for to get all of the test results in. Right, so it depends on the testing volume right now. And so the CDC is actively working to get this test out to the state labs so they can avoid that first the one day of sort of FedEx overnight shipping that it takes to get there. And then there's a, I know they're evaluating over 100 people right now. Um, and so as there's more interest and in possibility of tra uh, travel from other places in China um, to here and more, pe more uh, people under investigation, then they have to do more testing. It, that can take three days. Sometimes. Okay, so it's all CDC related. It's not right, like you can just go and say, oh, I want a, cor a coronavirus test. Diagnostic testing yeah. can only be done at the CDC right now. Okay. So let's take a big step back because we had you here last week and the numbers were much smaller in terms of the people who had passed away and the people who are sick. And now we're up to over 100 who have died, over 4,000 who are sick that we know about. How does that uh, pace of outbreak compare to other uh, diseases that, that you've studied in the past, Mars or others? So or the, 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 the pace of the outbreak right now is, is, seems to be accelerating, right? We had 1,700 new cases basically yesterday, um, in, in mo almost all in China. The good news is there hasn't been any onward, really on any onward transmission of this virus in other countries. I think there's only one case in Vietnam. Um, so that'll be something we'll, we'll watch. Um, we're learning a lot more about, uh, you know, what, what is going on in China, right? We're seeing this increasingly number of travel restrictions, uh, travel advisories. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't, I don't know what else to say about that other than, seven, you know, it's, it is increasing. It means the problem with these numbers is that they are indicative of what was going on seven days ago. I mean, the incubation period of this virus from one study looks like it's, you know, can range from one to 14 days is what people are saying, but really it's around five, six days. Okay. okay. And so we're getting information about what happened Last week, all the right. things that we did, all the things that were done to reduce transmission last week or seven days ago, were only being reflected right now. Mm -hmm. And people were already traveling, maybe before the outbreak, and maybe they were absolutely sick already. And that's why it's really important to get on top of this very quickly and not be just entirely reactive, right? Because you're sort of you're always fighting last week's battle. Yeah. And that's why also the, the question, there's this question of asymptomatic transmission. That's very, very key, right, as well. What does that mean, asymptomatic transmission? So that means whether, like, for, for measles or some influenza cases, actually, you can uh, not have any symptoms and still be shedding virus okay. uh, and still cause there to be onward transmission of the okay. virus. Mm -hmm. And so that complicates our ability to screen. Like, if you're screening, if you're looking for temperature screening at airports or other aspects like that, you need to, you're, 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 you're assuming that symptoms are going to be what helps pull someone out of the population. Right. Do you have any idea about the man in Snohomish County? Because we keep reporting that he's in isolation at Providence and Everett, but he's been in isolation for a while. How long does someone need to be isolated? Right. So I don't have any specific details on, on the individual. Uh, however, in these cases, it's really hard. I mean, do you anchor in SARS and do you hold someone for up to like two weeks? Do you let someone go home and you know stay isolated at home? Do you test over time and mm -hmm. see if there's still virus there, if there's still virus there, if there's still virus there, and hold them in isolation? You know, those are sort of open questions right now. And so right now they're acting on preponderance of caution. So I don't question anything yeah. they're doing, and I think that's smart. Yeah. I just can't imagine though being in one of those tanks, or, you know, or whatever those little cones are. Uh, that we've seen and just be there for days and days and yeah, days. Yeah, well, so we're, no. we, we appreciate you joining us today and that you're going to stick around for an hour. And if any of you have any questions, you can either tweet us at King5 uh, or each of our individual text Twitter us, handles. Whatever. You, you can we'll text us at 206 448 4545 and we'll try to ask the doc uh, in our next hour. Thank you so much for Thank being you. with us today. Thank you.